All right, everyone, thanks so much for being with us here on News Now, which is part of Fox 10 Phoenix.com. Again, for those of you who don't know, my name is Pilar Arias. Happy to be here with you. We're going to get going with some of our day's top stories and headlines from across the country before another live event happens. We do have a live picture of the podium at the State Department briefing. So as soon as that gets underway, we will head there. And then we're supposed to go to the House 115 our time for that anti-Semitism vote. So lots of moving pieces here. A very busy Thursday. We're getting closer to the end of the week. We're getting closer to the weekend. I know a lot of people are looking forward to it. Uh, feel free to let us know your plans if you would like to do so on the YouTube chat. And uh, we all like to talk to each other and get to know each other a little bit better. So we're going to head to California first, where they are reeling through another round of winter storms causing flooding. Let's get the latest details. Raging water, leaving behind a trail of damage in downtown Sonora. This is the first time in I don't even know how many years that it, we've had rain like this. Bobby Ennis has called Sonora home for nearly three decades. He's never seen Woods Creek rise this high, flooding homes and nearby businesses. I've seen it get close to this, but not this bad. We have our uh, drain plugging up right now. Sonora Police Chief Teru Vanderwill says around 1.30, a hailstorm passed through the county, followed by heavy rain pretty much started the, the perfect storm. He says homes and businesses were flooded, embankments damaged, and cars were washed away by high water, leaving vehicles stranded. With the rainfall pushing the hail that collected on the rooftops and in the streets into the uh, culverts and drains, it started clogging up. Uh, the water flow, and so we had a lot of flooding. Right up the road, they were actually evacuating people. Michelle Johnson was on the job as a mail carrier when she took a moment to capture footage of the raging waters. You gotta deliver no matter what, except when it's completely flooded and you can't go over bridges. While luckily no one was injured, people in this town are taking the necessary precautions. I hope that the next storm that comes isn't as bad. <laughs> Yeah, poor California just dealing time and time again with some pretty severe storms out there. All right, we are going to head to Florida where uh, an officer has been uh, found guilty of manslaughter in a fatal shooting. Let's get the details. We, the jury, find as follows. As to count one, we find a defendant guilty of manslaughter. As to count two, we find a defendant guilty of attempted first degree murder. Ex Palm Beach Gardens cop Newman Raja had no reaction when his guilty verdict was read. Moments later, he's cuffed and taken into custody. His family and friends walked out quickly and outside. It was a different scene for Corey Jones's family. We're finally getting justice. We got exactly what we wanted. It took six jurors about four and a half hours to find Raja guilty on both counts, manslaughter and attempted first degree murder, because he chased church drummer Corey Jones that night in October of 2015, shooting at him and killing him. I believe that the jury got it right. This was a very smart jury, and, and, and I believe that they got it right. They took their time. The family has been waiting three and a half years for this day, rejoicing outside the courtroom in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Also praying for Newman Raja and his family and their pain right now. We know that they are hurt too. They are really hurt. But nevertheless, what we, we thank God for the law. We thank God for justice. And, uh, we have a law here and nobody is exempt from the law. Corey Jones's family saying they finally have closure and finally feel peace. The truth will always prevail. And this is what happened today. It was the truth that convicted him. It was the truth that brought him to justice. It was the truth that sent him to jail. It was the truth. <laughs> that gave us justice for Corey. Next, we're going to head out to Temple University in Philadelphia, where we're hearing as many as 16 cases of the mumps. It's not the news Temple students wanted to hear on spring break. What do you know about the mumps? That uh, they're here, and I just got back from spring break today, so I'm trying to stay away. An outbreak of the mumps centered around the main campus in North Philly. It's really not much more than the flu. 
uh, the flu with some swelling in the jaw in the uh, salivary glands. Mark Denay, who runs Temple's Health Clinic, says the highly contagious disease is considered rare. Only around a thousand cases are reported each year in the United States. His goal is to prevent the spread in classrooms, dormitories, and locker rooms. Treat the folks who are sick. Uh, educate everyone else about what is going on and what steps they can take and prevent other people from getting sick. The outbreak started two weeks ago with a handful of students diagnosed. That number has now climbed to 16 and students are hoping they're not next. All I've heard is through emails and it's just going around. There was like, I don't know how many people, but it just seems to be like a lot and just contagious. So it's going around fast. Since it's very contagious, but um, they've been pretty upfront with it. So, you know, uh, transparent and open. If you think you may have the mumps, doctors say self-isolate for five days and contact a doctor. What may be surprising, most of the mumps patients were vaccinated as kids, a vaccine that loses its effectiveness over time. It's only 88% effective. Uh, and that effectiveness can decrease as folks age, uh, so it's not 100%. Wow, that learn something new every day. I didn't know about that. The MMR vaccine only 88% effective and kind of wears off over time. That's an interesting little tidbit there. Learn something new every day. All right, we are going to have uh, one of those caught on camera top stories next, and that is a couple pickpocketing. I was afraid of saying that wrong. A woman's wallet. It's real quick. They were pros and I didn't see them, hear them, feel them, or anything. Lori Gibbs has been an educator for 29 years, but on Saturday, while stopping for lunch and running errands, she learned one lesson the hard way after putting her purse on the back of her chair. In a quick moment, I'm like, oh, just, you know, set it back there, and uh, then just eating my lunch. As she ate, surveillance cameras caught these two walk up behind her. You can see the woman carefully take Gibbs's purse from behind her as the man she's with tries to hide what she's doing. She takes the wallet, puts the purse back, and the two walk off within seconds without Gibbs noticing a thing. Just reached right in and then takes the time to open it up while she's standing there. Soon after, she got a notification about the $2,800 charge on her credit card down the street at Best Buy. And so I was like, something's going on. So I reached over in my purse and my wallet was gone. Gibbs went back to Panera where she saw the video. I was mad at myself because first of all, that I put it there. And then second was that I was so oblivious to what was going on behind me. People know better and they do it anyway, like I did, but I won't let that happen again. McKinney police are reviewing the surveillance video and other charges made. But despite learning one difficult lesson herself, this longtime educator has one for the thieves who targeted her. Yeah, work and get a job and buy your own things and keep your hands to yourself. Well, if you haven't filed your taxes, you don't have very much longer to do so, right? Tax day quickly approaching, but it turns out the IRS is still feeling the impacts of the longest government shutdown in our country's history. Let's get the details. It is stretched so thin that things could go very badly wrong. In her final year on the job as the IRS's in-house watchdog, Taxpayer advocate Nina Olson told lawmakers the 2018 tax season has been especially difficult and demanding for the IRS, given this year's 35-day government shutdown. How long will it take for the agency to recover from the five-week shutdown? I had estimated 12 to 18 months. As for taxpayers, the IRS is reporting the average tax refund has increased 1.3 percent, up an average of $40 per return from last year. Yet a few weeks ago, the data was showing an 8 percent decrease, alarming some taxpayers concerned about how the president's previous year's tax cut could be impacting Americans. But Olson warned the IRS is struggling to process this year's returns. But the only way to really resolve taxpayer service issues is you need more employees. Olson's testimony comes as presidential candidates in the 2020 race weigh in who should be getting tax relief. We have created tax policy in the last couple of years that have benefited the top 1% and big corporations, and they, they need it the least. As for President Trump, he remains the only modern president since Richard Nixon not to release his income tax returns. 
Meantime, House Democrats say they're working to pass legislation requiring presidential candidates to release 10 years worth of personal tax returns. In Washington, Ray Bogan, Fox News.